I really think that uh, Postgres is one of the greatest databases available uh, right now. And one of the reasons is that it's really versatile. So we use it in production um, at work. Uh, basically all microservices, uh, when they need state, they'll use a uh, Postgres RDS instance to, to, to store the data. Uh, I also tend to use Postgres a lot in my hobby projects, my personal web applications. Um, and today let's talk about the uh, full text search capabilities of Postgres and why uh, you probably don't need Elasticsearch for your application and you can just deal uh, with, um, with Postgres and the result will be good enough. So in this example, um, URL creates a simple uh, articles um, database table then we fill it with some test data and then I'll show you how you can build your queries to uh, run uh, uh, full text search uh, and also how you can optimize that so you can pre-calculate the search vectors and then you can use uh, gene index to speed things up. Um, as usual, all uh, the code is published at GitHub. Uh, the link is in the description. So if you find uh, these kind of videos useful, uh, please support the channel by leaving the comment, um, putting the thumbs up, um, and obviously subscribing. So let's jump into the code. So first of all, I'm going to use um, test containers for easy setup of the environment. I'm going to use the Postgres uh, 17 Alpine. Uh, that's the uh, docker image name. Um, one interesting thing here is uh, that you can um, initialize your uh, database with some data if you want by uh, specifying the uh, file, uh, how you copy a file to container and then uh, the source file, the local file will be this, it will be in resources database init SQL and then it will be copied into the uh, database init entry point and basically that will allow us to uh, have the data ready. So if you go to um, init.sql file, uh, you'll see a database table structure. So you can ignore this for now, we can get to that later, but basically we have an articles table, then we have an idea of an article, and then we have uh, three fields that we potentially want to include in our search. So that will be title, subtitle, and content. Um, we have updated at created that, but we won't use that in this example. So um, in addition to that, I just asked some AI tool to generate uh, 20 or so um, example art articles. Some of those have uh, three fields. Uh, some of those will have just two because the subtitle is marked as optional. Let's go back to our core. And all these functions are basically self-contained uh, examples. Uh, the structure is, is this. We, we use the with open uh, macro and then uh, we'll start a dat database container. It basically will use Docker under the hood to spin uh, our um, uh, Postgres in a test container in Docker. And once that's done, we can just get a GDBC connection from it. And then we just use the next GDBC uh, library to uh, run uh, SQL queries. So first one, let's just see that we have the data, just select everything from articles. Uh, let's run our get articles demo. Um, so as you can see, we have a list of things, a list of articles, we have our fields, um, and basically yeah, that, that's how the data looks and that's what we all work with. So now let's move to uh, the search. Um, uh, search articles and uh, first example uh, will basically use the uh, dynamic uh, calculations of the uh, search vector inside the query. So if you have a small table uh, and you don't really worry about performance of the search at this point, uh, you can just probably use this. I have one hobby project when I just using that and it's uh, serving people uh, for like 10 years or, or so. It, it has really low amount of data, uh, so that's why it works just fine. Uh, so let's see how it works. We do the normal select. Uh, let's ignore the rank for now. Uh, let's move into the where conditions, right? And here we want to uh, combine um, combine where we want to search. So as I said, we want to search in title, in subtitle, in the content. Uh, 
uh, and we set in weight, right? So A will stand to the highest uh, weight and it goes down like this. Uh, so basically that means if uh, our search uh, term, like a, a word or a couple words, are in title or uh, like in subtitle, uh, that that will be that will run differently, right? So we prioritize um, the search entries in the title. So that's why we're setting the weight. Basically, this uh, combination uh, will allow us to search through all those three fields in the table. And then we just use this uh, at at operator and then uh, plain to ts query. And here we say that um, we want to use English language Eng English dictionary. Um, this question mark stands for the search query that we pass uh, into into that dynamic query. Uh, moving back to this select statement, you you'll see this is pretty pretty much the same as here. Uh, it's basically to calculate the rank. So in the result, there'll be a new field um, called rank, and we can uh, use that to sort. For example, here you can see we're doing the order by ranked uh, rank. Uh, in descending order, uh, and then you can just um, uh, use that rank in your application code as you want uh, to, to, for example, differentiate two rows, uh, which is higher in the search uh, results. So let's run an example. So this is called search um, demo dynamic. Uh, let's execute this function. And as you can see the result, we now have um, uh, these two things that we found. And we're actually searching for the future AI uh, words. So as you can see, we have the match here for the future. Here's AI, uh, future again, and AI here. So we have two results. And one is slightly higher um, than the other one. So um, let's move into how we can optimize that, right? Because as I said, these dynamic uh, queries here won't probably scale if you have more and more data. And uh, to solve this problem, you can just uh, pre-calculate this uh, um, search vector, right? And store it in the same table uh, as your uh, articles. And this looks like this uh, in in it is SQL. So as you can see here, I'm defining the search vector. Uh, that that should look familiar, uh, right? The exact same thing that as we had. Uh, an interesting thing that we can use the generated always s and then condition, and we store that into the table. So that uh, helps us to avoid writing some custom functions, saying like if we have an update in articles uh, row. Uh, we know that this search vector was already updated because we define it as as uh, uh, as this, as you can see here. Um, and once we have this uh, search vectors persisted in our table, we now can create an index to speed things up. And uh, usually it's um, recommended to use gene uh, index type uh, on the search vector. Uh, and to create the index, you just do this. So let's move back to uh, to the code. And here we have the search demo. Now this will be the function. And um, here, instead of doing that uh, search vector dynamically, we just use use it in the where condition, right? We just use search vector because of what it was already pre-calculated in, uh, in our table. And a rest is the same. Uh, this is exact. Uh, sorry, this is exactly the same. The rank is the same. Uh, in addition to that, I'm using this TS headline thing. So instead of just returning the title and subtitle, uh, I want to um, highlight the matching bits. So, um, for example, AI, I want that to highlight in my uh, front end, for example. Uh, right, and uh, you you do that by uh, wrapping your uh, column into TS headline, as you can see here. And there's some configuration that you can pass. And one option is to define the start and stop uh, cell. Uh, and 
In this case, I'll just use the, the B tag. Uh, so it could be like a bold font in, in, the, in the front end. So let's run the, uh, the demo, uh, this uh, search. And we see the same results, uh, but now if you look closely, we, uh, we are wrapping our uh, words uh, in, the, in the title and subtitle uh, with this B tag. And finally, I just want to show you that um, when you update the row, um, Postgres will actually update the TS vector as well. And for that, I created the uh, create and update demo. Uh, it's really simple. We uh, create one new article um, with some text, and then immediately we do the update. And we print both uh, articles uh, one by one. And in this update, we're just changing the title and we are looking for this uh, heaven word. So let's run that and let's see what we get. So it is this one. So now uh, in the second search, so if I uh, second print, if I search for heaven, um, Yeah, so now, as you can see, we have uh, we have that uh, word in, in our um, TS vector, right, right here. Uh, and it's the only occurrence, like, uh, only in the second print statement. So that basically means that we uh, don't have it in the uh, original search vector. That basically means that once we've done the update with uh, SQL, uh, the TS vector was recalculated and a new word was added there um, so there yeah, that's uh, that's the basics how you do that um, there's much more that you can do uh, like uh, I've seen some examples when people build really complex search with filtering paginations and all that stuff so all of that is possible uh, I hope that gives you a nice idea what you can achieve with Postgres and uh, more importantly is that if your application is storing data somewhere and you're using Postgres and you just want to add a, a search functionality, uh, I highly recommend just stick with Postgres. Don't go to add extra infrastructure like Elasticsearch, stuff like that. Uh, Postgres will allow you, allow you to go a long way until you overgrow the, uh, the features. So that's it for today. Um, Again, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, the code link is in the description. Uh, see you next video. Bye-bye.